And the journey continues with J8. And J8 is a not modified block that has log cabin squares and half square triangles with bars around the edge and then applique football things. So I've got my pieces laid out as usual and I am going to assemble my half square triangle units which is pretty self-explanatory. When I baste, I'm going to baste these two sides first and then this last so that they go opposite each other and so I can um, assemble those with relative ease. For my log cabin section, I am going to do that in, in order, which is always, so I'm going to base my square and then I'm going to base the bar that's the same size, which is this one. And then I'm going to go around in a circle. So this one goes from here to here, this one goes from here to here, and this one closes the gap. So I will base this one, I always, on these little bars, I will always base the shorter sides first and then the longer sides. It leaves you a crisper edge, especially with some of these smaller shapes. So I will base this and attach it, and then base this and attach this, then this, and then that. I have a directional fabric, which is why I've got arrows on my pieces, and this is my directional fabric, and it has to be up or down because these pieces are pointing down right now, but I've got them designed so they end up going up, which is why I've got them the way I do. So. And then once I've assembled each one of these units, I will be able to put these together in the middle and then I'll be able to surround them with these bar pieces. Once that block is assembled, then I can applique these little football shapes at the end and I'm going to base these with my gathering stitch method. So let's get started with assembly of the center. All right, so when I did my assembly for my log cabin section on my J8 block, I took this piece and basted it, and then this piece, I attached that piece to itself. Then you want to attach pieces that are the same length as the section you're attaching it to. So for example, with these two it's connected, this one's the same length, so that one got put there, and then this one got put on here, and then this longest one will be the one that gets put on last. So I'll finish this one up, and then I'll do this one. So now my log cabin block is completed and I can make my second one. Now I've got the two log cabin pieces done onto the half square triangle sections. When I go to base these, I'm going to base the legs of the triangle first and then the hypotenuse last. And what that does is it takes the tags away from this whole thing so I can assemble this without as much difficulty. So I will connect these and then connect these and then I'll be able to stick them in my block. So I got both of my half square triangle units completed. So I'm going to assemble them as my fabric is directional. So I've got these all the correct direction. And I checked it before I flipped it over because in this case, this fabric, these little bits of the, are the top and then these curvy bits are the bottom. So this is the up. So I will put these together as such. And then I will have the center done and I can work on the outside. So the middle is all connected. Everything's moving in the right direction. And so I'm going to baste my rectangles and then the long rectangles go on the sides and the short rectangles go top and bottom. So I'm going to attach the top and bottom first because they're the same size and then I'll attach the sides. Then I will applique the little footballs. So I've got the top and bottom rectangles attached to the center and now to attach the outside ones. So now i got the outside rectangles attached, and it's time to attach the little footballs to each corner. So I'm going to base them with my gathering stitch method. Okay. So now we're going to baste these little footballs 
which are outside curves. So any of the outside curves is this is how I handle this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a gathering stitch to connect these. The first thing I do is I need to put the knot of my thread on the, on the right side of the fabric so that when I'm done appliquing it, I can remove the thread without having to worry about the applique. So I've got my knot on this side, and I'm just going to take, I'm going to start about here, I'm going to take little stitches to make a gathering stitch all the way down this one curve, and I'll do this in little sections. So I'll do this much, and then I'll pull it through, and then I'll move on to the next section. So I'm going to do this all the way down, and then once I reach the edge of this, I'm going to do it down the other side. So I've reached the end of this stitch, and so now when I pull it, you can see that it's got this gathering stitch. So I'm going to pull this, I'm going to stitch this to the front, so I'm going to go back where that hole isn't, but where their fabric is, and I'm going to pull this through. Now, yes, this is gathered, but it's, it's still not very sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste, I'm going to thread baste this now that it's gathered. And I'm going to pull this tight so that I have a nice sharp curve. So I will do that all the way down. And as I go, and these are a little small for this example, but I'm going to pull this down as I go down the curve. And I will do this all the way around my shape so that I get a better curve here, as you can see the difference as I go. So now I have to place my little footballs where they're going to be appliqued. And this one is going to be down here in the corner. And I got a couple decisions to make. This piece isn't quite exactly corner to corner, which is fine. So I can either space them evenly from here to here, or I can make them touch here to make it look like a continuous thing. In the book, they've got it attached um, physically. And then there was a gap here, so I'm going to do that just because I think that having the continuous pink look will be the best. And But I will still align it with this corner. So it's it is, I tried to cut my fabric to best mimic this straight line. So this, this is the up direction of this particular piece. So I'm going to stick this here, and I'm going to try to staple this tiny, tiny thing. In the right place. So if I stick this there and I take my stapler and kind of slide it in there. Let's see if that did it. Uh, yeah, that's something. See, I can I can maneuver the tip a little bit while I applique it, and that is something I can live with because that point's not exactly as sharp as I'd like it to be, but it will be once I applique it. So that is how I'm going to place the other three. And then I'm going to applique them down. Once I've applique it down, I will remove my staple. So I've got all four of my little footballs attached to each corner. And now I'm going to applique them down. So once I've attached my applique pieces with my staple, I will then sew it down as I've done here. And I've done like a blind stitch that comes out right here at the edge, right underneath it. You can see it a little bit now, but once I take the papers out, it will embed itself in the fabric. And so then I take the staple out. And then after that, I take the stitches out from the top. And taking the stitches out, in this case, this is a smaller piece, but the theory is still the same on any, any applique piece. I will slice either side of this knot No, really. I will slice either side of this knot. And then I'll be able to pull out the thread. And my, my, my knot is very tight. So, there. So I'll pull this part off. And then I will go around with my stiletto and pick the stitches out. 
And as you recall, I gathering stitched the inside, which is under now underneath this piece, and then I top stitched it and I'm pulling out the top stitching. Now this is the gathering stitch stuff that's left and I'm just going to pull on my knot and it's going to pull all that out and now you have no more basting left. So that's why you want to put knots on the top. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to remove my staple and my, and my stitching from here and I'm going to put stitch this one down and do the same thing. This completes my J8 block.